Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a website or a domain, then head to squarespace.com forward slash wheels whereabouts to save 10%. Morning guys, welcome back to another day on the van build, the van conversion. I already started a couple of jobs this morning just because I wanted to crack on and get a few things done. One of the jobs was removing the side struts. The reason I've done that is because my bed is going to be going widthways along here and the dimensions from this panel to this panel is six foot six, which is absolutely bonkers, which means I'm gonna be able to have a full size bed. Just feeling a bit overwhelmed at the moment when I look at a blank canvas like this and I'm starting to order solar panels, MPPT chargers, leisure batteries and all this stuff. It starts to kind of turn my brain into scrambled egg. So every now and then, I say every now and then, every day, I'm feeling a little bit more stressed and uh, overwhelmed at uh, the project that I've given myself to do. But if thousands of other people on YouTube can do it, then I certainly can. Today's main job is to start on the rust prevention for the flooring. So I need to go to screw fix and pick up a few bits and bobs to start on that. And then we'll fill in the holes and just get all the floor all prepped so I can actually start laying some wood in this van and moving things forward. Before I start on the rust prevention, there is one job that I want to get done before that. So over the time of this van being used in its day-to-day -day life, some of these panels here, as you can see, have come loose so when you're driving around you can actually hear them rattling away especially this one here it's quite loose so what I'm gonna try and do to reduce obviously the vibrations the noise and all that is just re-glue them whack some Sikaflex in them and hopefully that should hold and help to reduce any vibrations and stuff when I'm driving I've never used this stuff before but everybody seems to be using it on their van builds We are locked, loaded, and ready for action. Definitely don't ask me to come and seal your bathroom because it will look horrendous. So most people's vans, like mine did, it came ply lined, which means that they covered the flooring and the sides in ply and then screwed that down to the metal floor of the van. So what I'm gonna do now is treat these holes that have been left from the screws from the ply lining and then try and get rid of any rust that has appeared. There isn't too much on my van to be honest with you because it's a galvanized body, which is again a big reason why I chose getting a Fiat Ducato because the metal is all galvanized, which means it's less prone to getting rust. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here are some of the screw holes which have been left from the ply. That one's quite big for some reason, not sure why. And then there's other smaller holes like this as well. To be honest, there's not a lot of rust or too many screw holes in my van. This is actually from one of the anchoring points. There's a few bits here which I'll probably paint. So what I'm gonna use today for that is a drill with a metal brush on the end. And then I brought myself a brush and some white metal hammerite paint which I'm then gonna paint over the top of this because this is a primer as well as a metal paint protector for any rust. So, first things first, start to wire out any rust like this that I see and then I can paint it all with the hammerite. I think actually just using the drill to get rid of any loose paint 
is the way forward. And then any sharp bits like this, just get a file and file it down. Honestly, I think that's it. There's me thinking like everything else on this van build so far. I thought this was gonna take me ages. I think now I'm just gonna give everything a paint over, not the entire van, just a few bits where I can see the exposed metal and then that should do the trick. And then afterwards, once the paint's dried, I will go and fill in those holes with some epoxy mold that I bought. A big thank you to today's video sponsor, Squarespace. If you don't know who Squarespace are or what they offer, then they're an all-in-one website building platform that can help you register a domain, create a fancy looking website, a blog, and even start your own online shop. Rather than trying to work out the minefield of website coding yourself, head over to Squarespace and they can supply you with hundreds of nice looking templates for you to choose from, which are completely customizable, making it easy and simple so you can have a fancy looking website in no time. They're offering a 10% discount, so head over to squarespace.com forward slash wills whereabouts for your free trial and 10% of your first purchase. Where the hell have I put the paint? Oh, I'm gonna go mental in a second. Have you touched the paint? What paint? The hammerite. No. Where the hell is it? Where do you put it? I can't remember where I put it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my. <laughs> this van conversion was meant to be fun. <sighs> Woo sa. Apparently one coat of this should be enough. Painting is done. The rust treatment, I believe, is pretty much finished. To be honest with you, I ended up probably painting a bit more than I should have, but there really wasn't too much exposed metal that I felt like I needed to cover, so I just decided to cover pretty much as much as I could. It's taken me around 45 minutes to do all of what I've just done, which wasn't too bad. I ended up painting the struts which I removed earlier because some of that raw metal was slightly showing. So I gave that a paint, none on the ceiling or anything, pretty much mainly just the floor. I also painted pretty much the entire rear back. I have no idea what you call this, but the very end of the van, because it was completely filthy, I thought giving it a lick of paint might make it look a little bit nicer. Not sure if it has. It doesn't really matter what any of this looks like right now because none of it is gonna be seen. I'm gonna put flooring on, I'm probably gonna carpet this end piece of the van. Obviously the walls will have cladding and the ceiling as well. So all of what I've just done, none of it will be on show. The next job, once all this paint dries, is gonna be to fill in the screw holes which were left from the ply lining. So in a couple of days, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna go for a couple of drinks tonight with some friends, come back in a few days, and then we'll be ready to crack on once the paint has dried to fill in the holes. So as you saw earlier in the video, most of the holes I obviously painted over with some hammerite to uh, try and prevent any rust happening in the future. And I'll get underneath the van to show you what it looks like underneath and then explain to you how I'm gonna be filling in these holes. Right, under the van we go. Oh, Jesus. Just be careful, because there are metal bars under your van that you can hit your head on. So some of the screw holes that have been left from the uh, screws that were used before, like this one as a hole, a couple here, and there's quite a few more down the end of the van. So, 
I need to and I want to fill these holes in. There's a few different ways that I've seen other people do it online and reading and doing my research. But the method that I'm going to be using is using this. This is mold, I believe. An original cold weld formula steel reinforced epoxy. It's called JB Weld. I got it from, uh, from Amazon. And it's just these two different formulas of liquid not liquid completely wrong word but mold let's say which you combine together you mix it up and then you use it to cover small patches like these holes smooth it all down sand it down and then jobs are good and it says here that it's used for household repairs automotive plumbing marine crafts and many more so this is the method that i'm going to be using to uh yeah to fill in the holes. I'll leave a link to this in the description if anybody wants to uh, wants to pick it up. Oh dear, I'm just reading the instructions on uh, how to use this JB Weld epoxy. Clean repair area of dirt, grease, oil, paint, and rust. So I probably should have done this first before I actually painted the bloody holes. But, oh well, I guess I cocked up on that but I'm sure it will still fill the holes and do the trick. So you've got one tube of JB Weld steel and another tube of JB Weld hardener, which comes in the packet together. It says you need 50-50 of each, so we'll just do a small portion first. It says here that it sets in four to six hours and cures in 15 to 24. So what I'll do is I'll do the rest of the holes. I think I've counted that there's about 24 holes like this that I need to fill in. And once it's dry, I'll come back and sand it all down to make it look a little bit neater. But we'll crack on with the rest of the holes. Okay, so I filled in all the holes that I needed to. That stuff's quite good, but it does get everywhere. It's a bit difficult to, uh, to direct into the holes. I got the first two looking quite nice and smooth, but then all the other holes just seems to be a bit of a disaster. But if we go underneath the van, there's no light leaks anymore because before you would have been able to see where the holes were in the bottom of the van. So I'm gonna have to wait a couple of days for this to dry and then I'll probably come back and sand it down a little bit. I'm gonna end this van build video here as we are now done, I think, with preparing the floor and hopefully I can now start to do some of the fun jobs. The next job should be really good. I'm gonna start doing the sound deadening and then in a couple of days, hopefully start on the flooring. All of these small little maintenance jobs, I feel like I had to get done before I got onto the main sort of more enjoyable jobs to probably watch and actually do myself. If you're enjoying the van build series, then please do let me know. Make sure to give the video a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Make sure to head over to my Instagram and give me a follow on there because I'll be posting more pictures of the van build in real time. So if you want to have any input on the van build series with ideas, suggestions, please do let me know. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the videos and I will catch you in the next one.